All right, guys, today we are gonna make a tool post grinder for the lathe, and we've got a few options to do that with. Uh, first up is the kind of larger scale stuff. Uh, this came off of a mini mill we bought from Little Machine Shop. Uh, it actually was on our uh, CNC for quite a while. Uh, it is reasonably powerful, it's quiet, it has most of the things we need, but it is kind of bulky. Uh, next up is this little uh, Chicago electric grinder that we bought from Harbor Freight. Uh, it really has very little torque. I think it's probably just a little too small for what we want. And then we've got this guy. Uh, Ryan got this on eBay. Uh, it does like 12,000 RPM, still has a decent amount of torque all the way down to two or 300 RPM. Uh, the biggest downside is it's got this tiny ER11 collet on it. Uh, it's got, I think, a quarter inch collet in there. Uh, it, it will work, uh, you know, doing bigger stuff like this grinder, which is probably the largest uh, grinding wheel we would put on there. It's kind of pushing it, but I think it could handle it fine. The advantage to this, though, is when you're doing really small bores, especially if you're in the kind of the back of the part, uh, this can get into a lot smaller spaces. And the overall package is pretty good for what we're going to try and do. So I think we'll go with this one. All right, this is where we're going to mount it. Let me go ahead and pull the quick tool change off and we can get a better look. All right, so this is kind of where we're thinking of mounting it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make two pieces out of aluminum that will sandwich this in place. Uh, we have this just held on with the lathe just to make sure we're on the tool center. Uh, and then that whole piece will be able to come on and off and mount the same way the quick tool change does. And then we'll run all the electronics down probably under the lathe and we'll keep those there permanently. Is such an amazing finish, my goodness. Yeah. Look at the reflectivity, man.
All right, for the first project on this tool post grinder, I thought I'd go ahead and modify this probe. Uh, this is made by a company called Drewtronics. I think they're out in Texas. Not a sponsor of the video, but uh, they do make a pretty good probe. We'll get more into the details on this guy uh, when we get to it in the CNC. But uh, I bought it with this 3 8 inch shank, and we need a 3 quarter inch shank. Uh, you can actually buy it that way, but it costs a fair bit more. So we'll go ahead and make our own. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. Rainey says, every conversion kit I've seen has the Y motor hanging off the front of the mill. Does a manual mill conversion of the machine not have a place for a motor behind it? Yeah, the Tormach we use has the motor in the back. It's probably more common for CNC's. But for our case, it's going to be a little more space friendly to actually push the machine towards the wall, so having it in the front helps. Plus, uh, you'll see in a future video, we're using very short motors for the front. All right, uh, Dan commented, uh, it would be nice if you took one minute sometimes to tell us about the aha moments you find in your videos. Oh yeah, I like that. Actually on this one, well, I come from a race car background, so it's practically in my blood to just remove the maximum amount of material from something to save weight, but it doesn't really make sense here. I mean, it's just more machine time and you know, more time that we would have to spend. Yeah, and you're paying for the metal one way or the other. You might as well use it. For machine tools, it turns out a little more weight can be beneficial. Huh, go figure. You think the uh, commenters are screaming at their screens right now about all the, the weight we were supposed to add to the surface grinder? No, I don't think so. Speaking of race car people. Master Mopar Man 4 says, are you going to counterbalance the Z with a weight or gas strut? What controllers are you going to use? Oh, uh, so far, probably no counterbalance, but we'll see. Um, controllers, I think, are like next episode. Yeah, it'll be next episode or the episode yeah, after so that. So do that uh, yeah. subscribe thingy. Yeah. Dewey S5 says, this machine is going to rock. Are you guys aware of CNC for XR7's work? Um, nope, not until now anyway. Um, I checked some out. He's doing a really killer job with a PM727. Uh, looks like he's even using some cool epoxy granite premix stuff. Yeah, check that out. Uh, Eekpai says, Metal Musings has a good amount of information and experimentation on the subject of epoxy granite. He also has a never-ending mission to upgrade his poopy mill. <laughs> yeah, we watch him. He is awesome. And he does a ton of experiments with epoxy granite and works on some really small machines. So check that out in the diddly as well. Uh, Lewis says, what? Where's the music? Well, sadly, it went down in a Beechcraft Bonanza, and we're all still a little sad about that. Yeah. Uh, Sidewinder, 155993, nice name, Great real name. catchy, uh, says, of course we want to see what's in the backyard with the sub-arc second accuracy. All right, that is going to do it. Uh, I'll leave you guys with a few screenshots of the surface finish that this thing can pull off. Uh, we were pretty impressed. Maybe we should be building these things. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, check it out.